Hello. Uh, progress this weekend. This will be a small update. Uh, built a battery tray with some pieces of wood here just to keep the, the batteries from sliding around. Uh, and like any good home haunter, I'm reusing wood that was from another project. So you'll see there's already this giant hole cut into it. So why not use it for routing cables? Um, since this whole thing will have sides on it, these stops are here to keep the batteries from sliding into the wall, but they can move independently and they could come out of this, the front, which will have a opening. They'll come out of the front with enough slack to unbolt them as you take them out. Um, so I'm going with smaller batteries for this cart. Uh, these are 18 amp hour instead of the 35 amp hour of the other cart. And then I'm going to do some tests to see if that's enough capacity. I only need this to run at uh, acceptable charge for about three hours. The other cart we can run all weekend and it's still in the 90%. So if I could lighten the load on these carts, that will help a lot. Uh, what else have I added? Uh, I've added the Pololu speed controller and wired up the potentiometer. I have not yet wired up the frequency feedback that's going to tap off of this motor. So this runs but without the frequency feedback. Uh, I've wired up the emergency stop button, kind of the main power. Uh, as you can see, when I turn that on, my stop and go buttons lit up. Um, I'm going to undo the uh, uh, undo the transmission for a bit and let you see how the motor will react. This is the output shaft of the motor which I will uh, take the speed encoding from. So I'm going to hit the go button. Right now everything is fine because it's on track. I hit the go button and you can see the motor is on. If the transmission was engaged this would be going around the track. Now as I increase speed, you can see that that's, I hope you can see that that's um, speeding up and slowing down. That's faster and that's slower. So let's get it going quite slow. Okay, reason I want to show you this, if I hit the stop button, you see it stops the uh, motor. So I hit the go button again and the motor is engaged. Now, if this comes off track, oh, I had something to block the track just a moment ago. Oh, here we go. So if this comes off track, I'm going to block the optical sensor. There we go. And you can see it's it has uh, stopped the motor. Start the motor again. I didn't like that. Let's use this. I'm going to block the optical sensor again, and as you can see, I've added strobes on either side, and this is to let the actor know that it's no longer seeing the track. Either the track is blocked, or it's come off track. Um, while it's stopped, I could press the go button. I'll bring this down here, and you can see the motor will only turn as I'm holding it, but once I release, because it's not on track, it won't continue to run. So now I'm going to remove the blockage. And now I'm going to press and release. And it's going as normal. So what's next is clean up the wiring a bit. Put on floorboards. Put sides carpet and pad the top of this and then we've got to create a backboard and a front board and I think the cart will be ready oh I need to add wireless stop buttons um, I'm gonna program it to the same frequency as the first cart so that any actor could press stop on any one of the remotes and both carts will come to a stop it's kind of a wireless e-stop even though it doesn't kill power it will let the actor stop the cart from afar if 
Uh, the kids are standing up, reaching off the cart, or, uh, you know, behaving inappropriately as we see fit. Thank you for watching. I don't know if this will be the speed we run them at or not, or if we'll speed this up a little bit. So I can control the other cart wirelessly, uh, so that's why I'm riding all the way up to the back of it. Thank you. 